my channel and in today's video I'm going to be offering some back to school advice and tips. This is to help you guys prepare for the new school year and these are things that helped me a lot in the past couple years so hopefully you guys also find this helpful. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first tip I have is to prepare your supplies ahead of time and I don't just mean your physical supplies but also your virtual supplies meaning the platforms you're going to use, the apps you're going to use on your phone. We've always lived in a technologically progressive world but ever since the pandemic this has only increased the demand for technology so obviously you're going to have to make a few investments in your virtual school environment. And one of my personal favorite investments is Grammarly. Grammarly is an investment that every student needs to make, especially if you're a college student. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant and an all-in-one writing tool that improves your productivity and saves you time for when you have multiple assignments to complete. It's extremely flexible, free to download, and easy to integrate into your everyday online life as a browser extension through Chrome, Safari, Firefox, etc., etc. In terms of flexibility, the browser extension literally solves all your problems. If you work on Google Docs, the browser extension will transfer all of those tools with you on the doc, so it'll offer you synonyms and help improve your writing and grammar right there on Google Docs so you don't have to go into the Grammarly website. I personally love going into the Grammarly website. I always use the website because I think that's so much more efficient. They have a setting goal feature there where you can select how they want to assess your writing and give you tips. And my favorite feature is actually the synonym feature. I always want to make sure that my writing is well thought out and very embellished. Grammarly is a literal godsend from heaven. I used it for my college essays. I used it on the essay that got me into Harvard and I also use it on all my writing assignments. So this is a definite must have that you should include in your academic investment. So with back to school season coming, make sure that you're prepared with tools like Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash study chai to sign up for a free account. And if you'd like to get extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off to help you save time and work so much more efficiently. So that's the first academic investment that I recommend. Thank you to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Another one is a technological investment. I personally loved the investment in my iPad last year and this year I'm planning on making an investment for a new laptop. The one that I currently have does not have enough storage to hold all my YouTube videos and my files and with college coming up I am going to have so many more documents so I'm thinking about that and another investment that is way way smaller is a whiteboard. These come in so handy especially if you're a visual learner. They're very affordable and great for group study sessions and individual study sessions. So yeah, those are some of my favorite investments and I recommend that you look into a couple more for the new school year. My second tip is to create an ideal study space, preferably something that differs from last year. This encourages a fresh start and motivates you to create better habits for virtual and in-person school. It does not have to be drastic changes, maybe something as simple as changing your organization system or adding a new device on your desk. I personally created a new organization system for all my books and supplies, and I also got a new keyboard. So those are just small changes, but they can make a big difference in how you view your study space. My third tip is to do background checks on your upcoming classes. Ask upperclassmen about the classes you're taking, the teachers you will have, and the study methods that will help you. Trust me, you cannot enter into the new school year alone or without any prior knowledge on what you're about to face. This goes for people who are entering middle school, high school, or even college. In high school, I would ask my siblings or upperclassmen that I knew about classes I should take and the teachers I have and whether or not I should transfer out of certain classes because the teacher doesn't teach as well and just stuff like that. I'm heading right into a BSMD program and my sister's a part of the program so sometimes I ask her for advice and sometimes I come across people who have gone through med school and they would actually give me pretty helpful advice about studying and making friends and just surviving school in general. One of the most popular advice that I've gotten is to focus on getting your MD and to avoid thinking of making life-changing decisions obviously everyone's different but you know it doesn't hurt to take anyone's advice with a grain of salt my fourth advice is to start practicing clean habits now it takes anywhere from 18 to 254 days for something to become a habit start by waking up early doing your skincare routine cleaning your room or even just planning your day sometimes you have to get into the rhythm of planning things plan your day even though you have nothing to do I have started getting into the habit of doing my face routine, cleaning and organizing, and watering my plants. So those are just three things I'm working on. 
My fifth tip is to find an organization system that best fits you, and I mean this in the most general way possible. So in terms of notes, do you want to do digital notes or do you want to write in a notebook? Or maybe you want to take loose leaf and put it in a folder and do it that way. It doesn't matter how you do it, but just make sure that it's ideal for you because when you're in school, you do not want to waste time just figuring out a system that works out for you. You want to figure it out now and then you'll have it for the rest of the year. This also applies to planning systems. You want to figure that out now. So do you want to do digital planning? Do you want to do a bullet journal? Do you want to put it on your notes app? Do you want to just do a general list of things you need to do? Personally, I'm going to stick to bullet journaling so then I have that therapeutic aspect along with my planning and I'm going to be using digital notes so I don't have to carry around a bunch of stuff when I'm walking around campus. My sixth tip is to make a plan for the goals or activities that you want to accomplish throughout the school year. So personally, I wrote that I wanted to work on my YouTube channel. I also wanted to discover new study methods to help me out in college because obviously what works for you in high school is so much more different than what works for you in college. And I also wanted to crochet a sweater. My goals were very diverse and some were small, some were big. It doesn't really matter how big or small your goals are as long as you have things to look forward to in the school year and things that you want to accomplish, that's all you need. And it'll just help give you a boost some motivation you know so my seventh tip is to budget your money and keep everything in order this tip goes out to high schoolers and college students alike obviously in high school you don't have as big as a financial responsibility as you do in college but it's still good to develop good money habits in high schools so that when you're in college you don't have as much trouble transitioning into that responsibility there are two things that may help you do this. The first is to keep everything in check and track everything that you spend in your notes app or in anything that you carry around everywhere like your planner or bullet journal. So list everything that you spend money on and at the end of the week, check it out and once you see all those spendings, you kind of don't want to spend any more money. And it also gives you an overview of what you want to spend in the next week. Maybe you want to spend a little less money or maybe you want to treat yourself and spend a little more. Another tip is to spend money in cash. I had a bank account in high school and I do have one in college. And one of the biggest mistakes I made is always paying through Apple Pay or like through my card. That just makes you spend so much money. If you keep everything on paper and on you, then you'll see how much money you you're actually spending so try to keep everything in cash you know there are two other budgeting tips that I've learned from other people one is that if you can't buy it twice and don't buy it at all and many of my other friends have mentioned meal planning those are just some good habits that I learned from other people and plan on practicing this school year my eighth tip is to deep clean your room or anything that you have before the school year starts. So by that I mean your laptop, you gotta get rid of all those files that you don't need. I cleared up my iPad, GoodNotes app, and my desktop. And also clean out your room. I made like a junk pile so I have all like my stationery that I don't really use in one box so I'm still deciding on what to do with it but yeah just make sure that you clean everything up and do a very very deep clean because you want to feel very refreshed when the new school year starts. My ninth tip is pretty small, but prepare your playlist on Spotify. So I've been working on my playlist over the summer for a very long time. I wanted to make sure that when I start college and I'm commuting, I have some nice tunes to listen to. Obviously this is optional and depends on whether or not you listen to music, but just a quick reminder in case you're trying to get into new music or something like that. My 10th tip is to be bold. If you grew over quarantine and developed a new style or aesthetic, don't be embarrassed of it. It's honestly a little concerning if you haven't changed at least a little bit over quarantine. Change is good and in my opinion, you can only glow up. So I'm pretty sure you have a great style and you'll do amazing. My 11th tip is to think of a long-term project where you can document what happened in your school years. Personally, I'm going to be journaling every single day for college, so I'm going to collect stuff that represented how I felt or what I did on that day and just shove them into this little journal. There are other things you can do like vlog or just take videos of yourself describing how each of your high school days went. I saw a lot of those on YouTube, but yeah, this is a little something extra, but I think it'd be nice to have something to look back on once you leave. 
My 12th tip is to make sure that you're in a growth mindset for the school year. There are two types of mindsets. There is a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. You do not want to be in a fixed mindset where you don't think that you can achieve anything or grow from your mistakes. An example of this would be when you're studying. So if you come across something you can't understand, a fixed mindset would be telling yourself that you can't do it and giving up. But a growth mindset is telling yourself that you're going to put it down for now and work on it tomorrow and ask your friends for help or look online for help or go to office hours. A growth mindset is what really gets you through the school year, so make sure that you practice that. So those were all the tips that I had for you guys. I hope that it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.